morning, it's Natural, it's Rachel here at Woodlake Nature Center. I'm here to talk to you guys about something that's insanely cool. It is an animal that we actually get a lot of questions about because people will see it alongside some of our trails at times when they're walking along the boardwalk and they have no idea what it is. And the reason why is because it just looks insane. It is a freshwater invertebrate which means that it is sort of related to insects. It means that it has an exoskeleton. So it doesn't have a skeleton inside like we do. And it's something called freshwater bryozoa. Now freshwater bryozoa is so cool because not only are they filter feeders, which means that they move water and eat little tiny like phytoplankton and other little microscopic organisms. That also means that if we have them in Wood Lake, that means our water quality is awesome. We want to see those. That means that we're doing a good job. That means our lake is healthy and overall means that it's it's doing pretty decent, which is great. Uh, and it means that there isn't as that much pollution in there, which is not something that we want. Now, Freshwater bryozoan, I'm going to show you guys one in just a second. Freshwater bryozoan is so crazy because people, when they see it, it reminds them a lot of like brain coral or maybe like an alien egg sac or something like that and that's just insane. But what's really cool is they create colonies. So they're not just one individual little invertebrate. They're a whole colony. So there's hundreds of them, even thousands. And what they do is they create an exoskeleton that surrounds them, like a little cup, like this. And the little cup, inside the little cup, is a little zooid. Now a zooid is the actual bryozoan. That is the microscopic organism, the invertebrate, that makes it up. And what they have is they latch onto the bottom of that U-shaped cup, and they'll reach out with little tentacles that have cilia, which are little tiny hairs that help filter and bring in invertebrate, microscopic invertebrates and phytoplankton plankton and algae for them to feed on. And then they filter the water back out. Now, the exoskeleton that they have, they don't have much um, in the way of like organs or a respiratory system. They don't breathe. They don't even have like a blood system or anything, a circulatory system. They do have a very basic nerve system though, which means that if they get disturbed in any way, they can bring their tentacles inside that gelatinous exoskeleton to protect themselves. Now they do, I keep saying the word gelatinous, and it is gelatinous, you'll be able to see in just a second, but they're kind of, they also secrete a mucus, so my hands are going to be really gross. I'm gonna pick this up so you can see, okay? Oh, yep, it's gelatinous. Look at this! Isn't this so amazing? Now, we found this here at Wood Lake, which is awesome. Now, all of those little dots that you might be able to see are all the different zoids that are living there. And there's some on my hands now too, which is crazy. Because holding it, I'm doing an okay, there's enough uh, space for them to be able to uh, attach themselves and everything, but holding them tends to break them apart. This doesn't really do any harm to the bryozoan itself. Um, as you can see, there's this big crack. Now this bryozoan was once attached to a stick, um, but naturalist Scott accidentally it's so heavy, it's over five pounds. We weighed it. It actually is so heavy, it broke off of the stick, which is something that can happen. These guys often attach themselves to stick to anchor themselves to a certain place so they can filter feed. Um, but it's just so crazy to be able to see all of the little zoids in the bryozoan colony. Now this is very slippery, but you can see the inside of this now, if this were to break in half or into other little parts or all of these little floating zoids that are 
hanging around in the bucket below or on my hands, where if they were to float away, that would be okay because these guys reproduce primarily asexually, which means that if they break apart, they can just go and be, they create clones of themselves, you know? Um, so all of these are genetically about the same, uh, which is just crazy. So they just bud off and just keep producing more and more bryozoans. Now these guys, like I said, are really good to be able to see here in uh, Wood Lake Nature Center. In North America, there are about 20 different species. Overall, in the world, they're found everywhere, primarily in the marine life, but also they're found in fresh water. Now, they are fresh water. These guys are fresh water, and we have about 20 different species here in North America, but overall in the world, there's about 50 different species that live in fresh water. They're also called moss animals. Um, so instead of being like a gelatinous, like it's all squishy. I don't know if you can see that it's kind of squishy. It looks real squishy. It's more firm than you would think it would be because it is an exoskeleton. But there, another type that is created has an exoskeleton that's very similar to insects. So it creates a type of shell or, or a uh, antler type structure that actually allows it to stick up and be a lot more firm. Now I'm going to put this back because it's very slick. Now they do really enjoy being in the water and the fact that we were able to find one, my hands are just covered in mucus. Oh, that's so crazy. But the fact that we were able to find one is so awesome. I'm really glad that we were able to share that with you guys today. I really hope that you are able to maybe even find this one here at Wood Lake. And if you do, please let us know. Because it's really awesome when we get to see more of them in multiple spots of the lake. I wish you luck with your discoveries. Thanks for watching here at Wood our creature feature this week at Wood Lake. See ya. Hi everyone, uh, naturalist Rachel here for Wood Lake, with Wood Lake Nature Center, not just for, ha. Um, today we're going to be reading Hay Water by Antoinette Portis. I apologize for any miss saying of names. Hey water, I know you, you're all around. Yep, I do get water from the faucet. You spray up and down. Never thought about it that way. You trickle. And gurgle. I do love streams. and rush towards the sea. We have so many rivers here in Minnesota. It's amazing. You cover most of the earth, salty, surging, and mysterious. That's true, about 70% of the planet is covered in water, which is crazy. Sometimes you lie, quiet and calm. Minnesota is known as the land of lakes. We actually have more than 10,000 lakes. I think it's closer to 15,000. So we can splash and play and yell at you. <laughs> I stomp in you and scatter droplets everywhere. In the morning, you wink at me from blades of grass. Sometimes you slide down my cheek without a sound. Sometimes you roar and pour.
water, even when you try to fool me, I know you. You blast and huff. You whistle and puff. You hide in the air and drift. You drift in the air and hide the world. Sometimes you freeze hard as a rock or a rock that floats. Or a rock that we can skate on. Sometimes you freeze soft as a feather. And fancier than lace. But water, I know it's you. You're hiding in this funny guy. And you're hiding in me too. Water, you're part of every living thing. That's true. When I'm thirsty, there you are. Hey, water, thank you. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading of Hey, Water for this week. Uh, it kind of goes along with the creature that we just, that I just told you guys about, uh, the freshwater bryozoan that does live in the water and filters it through. It's a very important thing. Water is a super important resource that we have, and it's really awesome that we're able to protect it and find it in so many different forms. I hope you guys have fun in your adventures here at Woodlake. See ya.